Some, but not all plants, have flowers. They come in all different shapes and sizes, and their purpose is to attract insects for pollination. A bee is an example of a pollinator, and it has an interdependent relationship with the plant. The bee is dependent on the plant for nectar, and the plant is dependent on the bee for pollination. Whilst collecting nectar, pollen cells will also stick to the bee's legs. When it travels to another flower, the pollen cells can be transferred and can fertilise an egg cell. In this video, we're going to look at the different parts of the flower, the different types of pollination, and how fertilisation happens in a plant. Let's first look at the different parts of the flower. Flowers have petals that are brightly coloured to attract insect pollinators. They have a stigma that is sticky to trap the pollen, a style to support the stigma, and an ovary that contains ovules, otherwise known as eggs. The stigma, style and ovary together make up the carpal, which is the female reproductive system. The ovule, or egg, is contained within the ovary. And this is the female gamete, the female sex cell. There is an anther, and this produces the pollen, the male gamete, and the filament to support the anther. Together, these make up the stamen, which is the male reproductive system. Finally, at the bottom, there is the sepal, which are leaves that protect the bud before flowering. The pollen produced by the anther comes in many different shapes and sizes. Some are sticky and spiky so that they can attach to insects and others are very small and light so they can be transferred by the wind. Pollination is the transfer of pollen from the anther to the stigma. Some plants are wind pollinated. In these plants, the pollen produced by the anther is transferred by the wind and will attach to the stigma of another plant. Wind pollinated plants have typically small, dull petals. They don't produce nectar, but they do produce large amounts of pollen. The anthers hang outside the flower so that the pollen can be taken away by the wind. And similarly, the stigma hangs outside the flower to make it easier to catch the pollen carried by the wind. With insect pollinated plants, the pollen from the anther of one plant is transferred by an insect to the stigma of another plant. Insect pollinated plants have brightly coloured and fragrant petals. They produce smaller amounts of pollen. They often produce nectar, which is a sugary fluid to attract bees. Their stigma has a sticky coating to trap the pollen. The stigma and the anthers are held inside the flower so any insects landing will brush against them. As you can see, this bee here has clearly collected a lot of pollen from the anthers of several plants, which it can then transfer to the stigma of other plants. There's two types of pollination. The first is self-pollination. That is when pollen is transferred from the anther to the stigma on the same plant. The other type is cross-pollination, whereby pollen is transferred from the anther of one plant to the stigma of a different plant. Nevertheless, the pollen will arrive at the stigma. It will attach to the stigma, and if it is the correct species of plant, it will start to grow a pollen tube down the style towards the ovule. It will attach to the ovary and the nucleus of the pollen grain will start to travel down the pollen tube towards the ovule. And when it reaches the ovule, the nucleus from the pollen grain will fuse with the nucleus from the ovule and this is when fertilisation happens. When the nucleus of the pollen grain and the egg or the ovule fuse together. This ovule will then become the seed and the ovary around it will become the fruit. And we'll look in the next video on how these seeds start to grow.
Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video, then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at GCSCRevisionMonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at ScienceSurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.